welcome back in our uh, last lecture we discussed on uh, iron beam and specimen or iron matter interaction and signal generation uh, today we will continue with signal generation and also how different contrast forms through the signals uh, this is what we will discuss today in today lecture particularly uh, uh, continuing from signal generation and how different contrasts such as topographic composition channeling and ion contrast are generated uh, using an electron ion microscope. Uh, last class we have or last lecture we have discussed on SC1 what is SC1 and what is SC2. So, uh, briefly again uh, SC1s are generated uh, from the near the specimen near the near the place where uh, incident beam either electron or ion strikes on the specimen and the signals generated or electrons generated from that place is called SC1. But when uh, that electrons or ions come inside and interact with the specimen and goes outward or outside with a larger angle, the, those are termed as backscattered electrons or backscattered ion. In case of ion, it is backscattered ion BSI. In case of electron, it is called backscattered electrons. When those electrons comes out of the specimen, by that time they interact and in, with the specimen their energy will become less. So, when energy become less of those ion and electrons, they can produce more SC2. These are SC2, these are SC2 these are SC1 and SC2. And in case of electron microscope, the backscattered electron formation is higher as compared to the backscattered ion formation with ion microscopy, because less number of backscattered ion formation occurs in helium ion microscope, less backscattered electrons co comes out of the specimen. In particular, the SC2 SC2 in scanning electron microscope in SCM is about about 2 to oh, 5 times 5 times of SC1 in scanning electron microscope. So, uh, when we talk um, talk about uh, secondary electron image in scanning electron microscope mostly there will be SC2. In many times at the bottom of this uh, photographs there will be uh, detector will be SC2 det detector or SC2 detection. On the other hand, with a ion microscope, as the yield of backscattered ion is less because ions will recoil more and they will they have negligible or less number of such backscattered ions comes out. Therefore, SC2 is less. And this SC2 is one of the main limiting factors of the resolution. We want the signals from the region where our incident electron or ion falls on the specimen from that region as small as possible. If they are coming away from the specimen, they are degrading the resolution. Moreover, uh, SC2, if we took uh, uh, take the ratio of SC2 and SC1, SC2 to SC1 ratio is certainly much higher in scanning electron microscope 2 to 5 as compared to the helium ion microscope. A again SC2 to SC1 ratio depends on the specimen and also ion energy. Incident energy, if incident energy is more, then more backscattered electrons and more backscattered ions also come out. I not only that materials, as we know backscattered electrons are used for composition uh, distribution or uh, distribution because wh as we increase the atomic number of the uh, uh, material, then more backscattered uh, electrons comes out and from that brightness difference we can tell uh, some region has higher atomic number material and some other region where lower atomic number of element, elements. That is also we have studied in scanning electron microscope. The same thing here as we increase the atomic number uh, in the material, the backscattered ion or backscattered electrons also more. So, number of SC2 Again, number of SC2 per unit path of BSI backscattered ion is less than SC1 per unit path path uh, is less than uh, SC1 per unit path of primary ions. So, more so this SC2 
versus SC1 is less for helium ion microscope, but more in scanning electron microscope. This is the one of the main reason again for higher resolution surface resolution in helium ion microscope. Again when energy of the primary ion increases, backscattered ion increases also increases that, that, that is common that is same for uh, electron cases also. And uh, there is another electrons SE electrons that is SC 3 electrons that we have also discussed uh, in a scanning electron microscope. So, briefly I will talk about once the backscattered electrons uh, come out of this specimen uh, they can backscattered electron or backscattered ions comes out of this specimen they can go and strike the pole piece or objective lens and once they strike the pole piece or objective lens or maybe in the wall of the chamber when they, when they strike in the wall of the chamber, they will also produce secondary electrons and those are termed as SE 3. Because again why we term it as SE? Because their energy is again less than 50 electron volt therefore, SE 3 term uh, and we can um, uh, differentiate, differentiate SE 1 contribution SE 2, two uh, we can differentiate SE 3 contribution from SE 2 and SE 1 by putting a grid around the sample. So, if we put a grid around the sample and apply a negative potential of let us say whatever uh, let us say 50 electron volt, then all the electrons emerging with energy less than 50 electron volts will come back because it is a negative potential. But ions, backscattered ions have a much higher energy, much much higher than 50 EV. So, they will come out once they come out strike on the wall or the pole piece, pole piece they will produce SE 3 and we can know how much percentage of SE 3 in our um, how much per percentage of SE 3 coming from the sample. And there are approximately 10 percent of SE 3 signal in helium ion microscope for most of the material many of the material. And uh, this is one thing. Second thing is that the yield of the backscattered electrons the yield of the backscattered electrons is in the range of 0.5 to 0.1 to 0.5 with the change of atomic number. As the atomic number increases, uh, backscattered electrons yield also increases, but it is in the range of 0.1 to 0.5. But other hand, the yield of backscattered ions significantly vary with the atomic number in the range of 0.01 to 0.02. If we take a ratio of 0.5 to uh, this, this range, ratio of this to this it will be much smaller compared to here. It is varying quite a wide range. And this has a strong conse consequence on the SE 3 image. So, as this is quite widely vary, we can use SE 3 electrons um, uh, uh, SE 3 we can use SE 3 electrons for imaging purpose to also tell uh, there is a difference of uh, atomic number in my specimen how the distribution of higher atomic number material and lower atomic number material presents in my specimen. Moreover, uh, backscattered ion uh, yield in crystalline material is strongly affected by channeling than that for electrons. So, as we have studied um, EBSD electron backscattered diffraction pattern and similarly uh, the channeling contrast can also be obtained using backscattered ions as that we get in case of uh, scanning electron microscope. If we look at this um, gra um, photographs that what we see here uh, B backscattered ion versus SC 3. Uh, versus secondary electron image of a polished uh, uh, molybdenum metal. Uh, the A1 is the is is the um, signal from backscattered ion detector, whatever the backscattered ion detector, and the B1 is with 50 per 50 volt retarding potential, 50 volt retarding potential, 50 EV. Uh, that means we if we are put when that is grid, we are putting around the sample when that is 50 electron volt. Uh, then uh, we will collect the image from SC, uh, we will get the image with only SC 3 electrons. So, those are coming SC 3 electrons com comes uh, from the backscatter ions. As you see the contrast difference, they, they are almost same, quite quite same, but it is little better SC 3 one is better, uh, the contrast difference is better. So, they give similar, but on the other hand if uh, without any retarding potential if we take this is the second electrons image which is contribution of both uh, all SC 1, SC 2 and SC 3 we do not see any uh, clear contrast difference. 
So, the dark and brightness contrast on BSI and SC3 image, this first two images of a polished molybdenum surface is due to the effect of ion channeling on the grains of different crystal orientation. So, that gives the contrast difference and therefore, the emerge uh, that means the formation of the backscattered ions and SC3 in the specimen clear cut difference that is the advantage of uh, considering SC3 electrons in the imaging purpose or backscattered ions for the imaging purpose. Uh, again another important things we this this was the, about the signal detection SC1, SC2, SC3 how they, they contribute to the imaging purpose. Uh, if we uh, look uh, at uh, the ion as an incident beam, ions have a, a significant mass therefore, uh, it can uh, do a certain damage to the specimen, uh, we cannot completely neglect though in helium would, would do less damage or almost negligible damage if we do not use very high, high energy helium ions, but still it can have a effect. Uh, uh, Due to very small wavelength of helium and very focused prop, the helium uh, ion microscope provides uh, uh, good resolution and also large depth of field that we have discussed before. It can uh, potentially cause the damage in the sample uh, at the surface because of its large mass, because, because of its large mass. So, uh, it is important therefore, to control the, uh, control the um, uh, dodge of ions when it falls on the specimen. Uh, uh, for example, the ionic ion dodge uh, can be uh, can be uh, written as like uh, uh, that can be we can say aerial dodge. Aerial dodge can be presented uh, with a symbol, let's say sigma, which is nothing but uh, number of ions per centimeter square. And if we talk about aerial dodge rate, rate is uh, applicable when uh, for example, uh, it uh, causes some consequence let us say ion dodge um, forming uh, some thermal effects or charging effect to the specimen and then the thermal effects or the temperature will dissipate uh, with, a, with time as a function of time. Similarly, charge will dissipate with function of time then uh, in that cases we can write as a per second ions per centimeter square per second if, if, if we call, uh, call talk um, about the rate of uh, aerial dodge uh, to compare with how the thermal effects happening in the sample. Okay, this is about damage. Uh, we do not want damage in the sample for microscopy purpose. So, we want to have the dodge as less as possible, uh, as less as possible as long as it can provide such enough signal. If it, we take too much low dodge, then it would not provide such signal, enough signal that, that we cannot utilize for our imaging purpose. We should use a, uh, an ion dodge, which should be good enough to produce enough signal. So, we can say that previously we discussed about S n by n uh, signal, uh, S by n signal, uh, signal to noise ratio we have discussed before or S n r I can say sig signal to noise ratio S n r signal to noise ratio. Let us say our incident number of incident ions let us say n i is our number of incident ion. number of incident ions and we want uh, to detect the signal detect means detect the signal means detect the particle let us secondary electron or backscattered uh, uh, ions. So, those are called signal. So, let us say N d N d is uh, number of detected particle detected particle. So, the yield yield of yield then therefore, why yield will be y will be equal to n i by n d sorry uh, it will be uh, e, um, will be n d by n i number of detected signal divided by number of incident signal yield y. So, we can write the signal to noise ratio is nothing but uh, root over of n i average number of ions incidenting on this specimen and which equal to root over of uh, y plus 1 plus y. This we can write signal to noise ratio or is it nothing but signal to damage ratio uh, in this case because we want less damage and more signal. So, signal to damage ratio should be as high as possible. Uh, then uh, we know uh, this signal to noise ratio should be at least 5, uh, 3 to 5 at least to, uh, to have a better contrast on the image. So, in order to have signal to noise ratio 
uh, approximately 5 we should have around let us say n i should be around 25. 25 number of ions means that uh, root over of 25 is equal to 5. And then uh, this uh, this aerial dodge also depends on uh, uh, the region uh, the uh, the area on which uh, ion beam is striking. So, sigma is nothing but is equal to n i that is number of ions divided by uh, field of view f of e field of view that means that area on which the ions is uh, being incident on this specimen. So, now if we put uh, the let us say this equation 1 and equation 2 if we put uh, uh, n i from equation 1 to equation 2 then this sigma can be can have uh, s n r to the power square d square then f of b b square plus 1 plus 1 by y this will be signal this will be our um, dosage, uh, dodge ion dodge. Now, this uh, ion dodge uh, uh, sigma uh, should be less than the critical value at which it can start damaging damaging the sample or, uh, or producing undesirable effect. The sigma uh, uh, aerial dodge should be less than the critical value that it could uh, produce the damage. In some cases that is not an, uh, not an important for example, if our material itself is amorphous now uh, dodge is more uh, it will again amorphous, amorphous size the material. So, it is not a problem or for example, if we are uh, using a very thin section thin surface and then uh, ion beam will go and penetrate deeper into the specimen and then damage will be created in the soft surface not at the very surface. So, that then also it is not a problem if we take ion dodge little to be more, but for other, other cases where we want to see the information of the specimen surface very surface of the specimen then uh, this ion dodge should be as less as possible. Uh, so, then field of few uh, as, uh, in order to have a ion dodge less uh, according to the formula signal to noise ratio uh, should be uh, good and uh, yield also supposed to be good. Then we talk about different contrast mechanism. There are several uh, factors that determines the contrast uh, in case of helium ion microscope. Some of those are like uh, topographical contrast, topography means three dimensional uh, uh, formation of the image, uh, more the tilt of the sample, more up and down of the sample uh, giving the 3D features this is the topographical constants. Uh, then second is material or composition constant uh, contrast, material difference is there some places higher atomic number uh, material some places low atomic number uh, low atomic number materials then we should about to distinguish them that is material or composition contrast. Then ion channeling contrast oh, we have discussed about electron channeling and this is ion channeling because ion beam is incidenting on this specimen. Then voltage contrast this we have discussed this is important for semiconductor industry or chip making industry where lot of circuit device are there if there is a circuit break by applying a potential and then we can know from where secondary electrons will generate or not that is a voltage, voltage contrast, magnetic contrast depending on the magnetic domains uh, they align magnetic field will be aligned in different direction they will facilitate uh, generation of the uh, secondary electrons or not facilitate generation of secondary electrons and that way we could find the contrast difference that is magnetic contrast, optical contrast depending upon uh, the optical nature or of the material that can give uh, luminescence like in previous uh, scanning electron microscopy case we have discussed about cathode illuminations because electron was, was bombarding on the specimen, but in this cases we say it is a ion illuminations because ion is bombarding on the specimen. We will not discuss much on the voltage, magnetic and optical contrast because they are almost similar to the scanning electron microscope case only the performance of the helium ion microscope case is a little better. So, it is almost same as the phenomena and consequence are almost same, but uh, so quality uh, the um, performance is better on the other hand uh, uh, the principle is same. We will only discuss the, the top 3 bec uh, and the top discussion on the top 3 is uh, uh, also same similar manner as scanning electron microscope, but for the sake of uh, the superiority of uh, helium ion microscope we will be discussing to, to, to give you famili to familiarize you with, uh, you with about uh, uh, the superiority of the helium ion microscope we will discuss about the first 3 contrast mechanism. Let us see first topographical contrast. What is the difference here? As you see here, 
uh, this is uh, a sample is uh, uh, sample is a uh, uh, textured silicon textured silicon and the first one first two uh, a and b are the scanning electron microscopic image one was at a very high acceleration voltage 15 keV and second one is 1 keV now you see the difference in the surface in the first one you do not see the clarity of in the surface because in this case electron beam is penetrating much deeper into the specimen and the information or signals is generating from uh, not from this uh, very surface of the sample, but rather uh, from a certain depth of the sample. Therefore, you do not see uh, the surface information in the first cases because here energy of the incident electron is much higher, electrons are penetrating much deeper and the information is coming little deeper of the specimen. So, surface information is not clear in the first cases. Again in scanning electron microscope by using a lower energy incident beam of electrons like 1 keV. Uh, now, electron beam will not penetrate much deeper, it is penetrated less on the surface, uh, less to the sample specimen and therefore, signals will be generated more close to the surface, therefore, the more surface clarity is there. Third one is our helium ion microscope. As you see, the clarity of the surface is much, much improved with a helium ion microscope because here only SE1 is coming, is used much more SE1. SC1 to SC2 ratio will be much higher in this cases much higher therefore, giving not only better resolution, but also better clarity. In addition to that if you look carefully this region uh, is not very clear, but you see this region are much much clear with helium ion microscope because it is a larger depth of field we can use smaller alpha value that is angle of aperture or angle of divergence angle half angle. So, now, in helium ion microscopy, we are again using high acceleration voltage because otherwise we cannot have enough secondary electron shield because the mass of the helium is quite large. So, we have to put higher acceleration voltage so that to have a certain velocity so that it can penetrate to an extent of the surface. This is the topographical constant which is much superior with helium ion microscope as compared to the scanning electron microscopy. Material contrast, if you look at the material contrast. Uh, as you see here in the left side table, uh, table different materials uh, having different atomic number have different yield at 20 keV. You see large difference in the secondary electron yield oh, um, oh, uh, when ion beam interacts, uh, especially this helium ion uh, interacts on the specimen. And then you see here uh, 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 the uh, helium ion produce typically in the range uh, the uh, the signal to uh, the uh, number of uh, number of secondary electrons this is number of secondary electrons generated per single helium ion per single helium ion so if we see this uh, uh, isi then it is almost in the range of 2 to 8 2 to 8 unlike in case of electron it is 1 to 1.5 this value this value will be 1 to 1.5 with electron beam one with one 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 electrons in the beam and therefore, signal is certainly much higher. So, it could produce large much higher signal to noise ratio giving you, you much uh, clarity on the uh, surface image uh, Im is much clarity on this uh, the image. In addition to that, if we look at these two photograph in the same place, it is a cross uh, and what we see in SCM, it is certainly giving three dimensional image, it is a very good image, it is quite a good resolution. But you see the contrast difference in this region, middle part of helium ion microscope is quite dark also it is quite dark here. It indicates that this portion are from different material which do not produce enough secondary electrons. So, this is what material contrast or composition constant that we do not see here almost the contrast brightness and the brightness is almost similar, but here a quite distinct difference in the darkness brightness uh, in helium ion microscope this is due to materials because the number of secondary electrons generated from uh, this region is much less. This contrast we can only get with helium ion microscope. We, if we ch talk about ion channeling contrast, ions channeling means that is electron channeling in previous cases, ions will channel inside the specimen and then they will come or not come. When ion ch channel more deeper into the specimen, then less number of secondary electrons will come out. If we channel uh, if we do not channel much into deeper into the specimen more secondary electrons will come out 
and therefore it is giving different contrast level. This is uh, this is this image uh, is uh, with backscattered ion detector. The uh, secondary electron ion detector also gives uh, similar uh, similar photographs. And contrast level for ions is eight to ten times higher than with electrons. Moreover. Uh, no channeling pattern is formed with helium ion microscope. In, in our scanning microscope, there is channeling pattern form. There is a uh, lines of lines of uh, pattern form. Here we do not form this because here uh, the wavelength uh, is much smaller compared to the electrons. As wavelength is much smaller in this cases, no channeling pattern is formed. But channeling contrast is very good, and this channeling contrast uh, is very important when you have a thin film in case of because uh, it is com this is coming from the surface only if it will be much bulk and much thicker film then the uh, signal will become less in this case helium ion microscope in case of scanning electron microscope uh, we want uh, bulk sample uh, so that uh, because that happens with back scattered electrons the channeling comes from the back scattered electrons so having is a, because back scattered electrons come little deeper of the sample therefore having a bulk sample a uh, thicker sample is, re, is a one of the requirement for scanning electron microscope, but it is not here. Here we would prefer to have a thin film or information from the surface. If we want information from the bulk, this is not suitable. Then we one should go for uh, scanning electron microscope. This is ion channeling contrast, then backscattered ion imaging. Like backscattered electron imaging, we can also use the backscattered ions, though the yield is less backscattered ions, but that still can be utilized for the purpose of imaging purpose as we have I have discussed uh, I have talked before the range of the backscatter ions with different atomic number varies much wider range in helium ion microscope ion microscope as compared to the scanning electron microscope. Here you see the energy uh, here you see the um, um, uh, left side image is a secondary electron image uh, giving the topographical constant, but the right side was a backscattered ion image clear uh, same solder place some solder pump. Uh, this is a, um, a lead tin solder bump giving a quite drastic difference in the contrast level. This region is much brighter because it has atomic higher atomic number, lead is higher atomic number compared to the darker region where it is tin where low atomic number. Uh, and when the ions bombard on this specimen, uh, it will transport it and uh, transfer its energy to, uh, to the atoms and then some of the uh, some of its energy will be lost, but still. Uh, some of the ions will be backscattered and those ions have ener uh, energy quite high also. And it depends on uh, what will be the energy of the backscattered ion depends on the atomic number of the target uh, target sample or the specimen. The energy of the backscattered helium ion is determined by the atomic mass of the uh, target nucleus and the angle of the scattering. Higher the uh, atomic number uh, more energy will be the backscattered, electron, backscattered ions. So more, uh, in addition to that number of backscattered helium ions will be proportional to the uh, z square or atomic number square. So, as we increase the atomic number more backscattered electrons will come out as you see here that is why it is giving much brighter uh, in the image. And that would tell us the difference between which region has higher atomic number material and which region has a lower atomic number uh, material. Then ion dependent constant con contrast. Ions we have so far talked about helium ion microscope or helium ion, but by changing helium to other ions can also produce a drastic contrast difference. For example, that is what uh, you see here. Um, uh, let uh, um, uh, we go ahead, uh, we stop here for today and we continue with this ion dependent con con contrast in, in our uh, next lecture. Um, but before that, what I would like to tell you that. Uh, uh, we have discussed about the interaction volume. The interaction volume is much, much smaller in case of ion microscope as compared to the electron microscope. Moreover, and second thing is the signal generation. Signal generation signal will mostly come from the surface because again ion will not penetrate much deeper. So, it will interact near the surface. So, signal will be coming much from the surface giving us much higher uh, surface resolution. Uh, again, uh, the ratio of SE 1 to SE 2 is much higher SC1 to SC2 is much higher with helium ion microscope because more SC1 are generated and SC1s are generated from uh, from where the incident beam strikes 
because ion beam will not penetrate uh, first it will not penetrate much and even though it penetrate to an extent it will recoil here and there and that uh, chance of forming a backscatter ions is less therefore it will produce less backscatter uh, ion as it produce less number of backscatter ions chances of formation of SC2 is also less therefore SC1 to SC2 ratio is higher and that gives us the, us the superior resolution surface resolution with a helium ion microscope. What more we have discussed that uh, the, uh, the topographic contrast, topographical contrast depends on the tilt angle. So, when tilt angle is more then topography that means electron uh, uh, that means secondary electrons coming from helium ions is much higher. So, for example, uh, we have seen before uh, the tilt angle in tilt angle degree and here the yield SC yield we have seen that for ISI ISC with helium ion is much larger than SC with SCM because yield is much much higher with tilt angle topographical contrast is again better with a helium ion microscope this is what also we have discussed today uh, in last couple of classes. So, these are the important uh, points that makes uh, helium ion microscope much superior to scanning electron microscope. So, in our next class we will uh, discuss on uh, the next lecture we will discuss on more about uh, uh, little more about contrast. Uh, and today let we stop here. Thank you.